Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 207. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma9011, and you can catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash Enigma9011. You can drop a follow over there. You'll get notified when we go live, so you join in on the fun and chaos with us. But if you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. Go over to YouTube and podcast services the very next week where it's broken out topic by topic and put as one big video and MP3 for your amusement on the following Friday. Last but not least, wherever you're watching or listening to this, if you could hit that subscribe button, follow button, whatever it is, it may seem small, but it does help the channel grow. So if you take the time to do that, we would love and appreciate you for it. Might be a little shorter of an episode, but uh, as someone was struggling to think of what to talk about, but you know, things happen. Hopefully it's a good conversation nonetheless. We're going to do a little bit of a revisit as Moose jumps in here. There you go. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking, or rather revisiting, uh, the upcoming upcoming games in 2024 I'm looking forward to. Um, we were lucky enough to once again do kind of their end of the game, or sorry, end of the year game discussion uh, with Jeff Reg when he was on that episode at towards the end of 2023. Um, and we dabbled a little bit into upcoming games that we were excited for, but I felt like I kind of lacked on it a little bit just kind of maybe touched on one or two things um so i wanted to go through a big list of what's coming out this year rather what's expected to come out this year similar to the movie topic we did a few weeks ago um and just see what's caught my attention what i'm looking forward to obviously we're already oh boy (laughs) already almost a third of the way through the year so we can talk about the stuff that's come out as well um that we might have already talked about in other podcasts, but just lean on them again, talk about them, and go from there. So, let's jump into January. I don't know if there was anything here that particularly caught my interest. Um, the list I'm going off of is handy dandy Wikipedia, so all the uh, on the independent side of things, it might not have everything listed. So I do apologize there if I don't think of something on the indie side um, right off the bat. Um, big note here, Last of Us Part 2 Remastered came out. Um, me playing Last of Us Part 2 for the first time last year, really enjoyed Part 2 considerably more than Part 1 um, and the twists and turns that you take in that story. I don't think I'll be jumping into remaster. I'm really happy, obviously, for the fans of Last of Us and from fans of the show that are now jumping into the series. This is a perfect opportunity for them, obviously, to jump into it. I think for current owners of like the original release i think it's only like you can do an upgrade how they were doing with like the cross-gen thing like ps4 to ps5 like a ten dollar upgrade to ps5 version i think they have a similar thing here for owners of that so that's nice in comparison to part one remaster which obviously was a bit of a more jump graphically um than the original release um but yeah happy for them uh those people jumping into it but i don't think i'll be doing that anytime soon there is a game on here that i'm tempted to check out it is an indie dev hilltop studios uh, i heard about it shout out to six one indie heard on their podcast little guardsman puzzle video game inspired by papers please it was developed by hilltop studios published by versus evil and tiny build um this sounds like you are kind of like a door what do they call it like a doorkeeper i don't know if that's the right term but you like you have to determine if people enter your town or don't enter your town. So I'll, I'll just read the synopsis of the gameplay here. In Little Guardsman, a player takes control of Lil, short for Lilith, a 12-year-old girl who must do her father's duty, duties as guardsman for the fantasy kingdom of Sprawl. Players must decide to admit, deny, or later arrest different characters, and the player's choices have an impact on the story. Lil has three action points. For each character who wishes to enter Sprawl, each action point can be spent on interrogation, calling one of the three royal advisors for their opinion, or on one of the five tools available. Tools also require power crystals to operate, and they can only hold a limited amount. However, upgrades can be purchased to provide the tools with more uses. Players can also retry any interaction, but they only retry but they only retry a limited number of times. Players can also travel to other parts of Sprawl between shifts, allowing players to see the results of their decisions and occasionally making them do something which impacts the story. So that sounds pretty pretty cute. Um, I think I've seen a little bit of footage of Papers, Please, which obviously this takes inspiration from, um, but it sounds adorable. Obviously, the art style also is very neat um, and cute. So 
might try that out at some point. Seems like it's on all consoles or all platforms, that's the word. And Tiny Build has some some good stuff that they've worked on before. So might jump into that one eventually. Um, and last one I'll shout out for, well, I guess two, for January. So we had two games that came out, which I haven't jumped into, and I don't know if I, I will, but I know there's a big audience behind them. We got Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. I think this is continuing off of, oh boy, it's the the other protagonist, not Kiru. Kiru? No. Is Kiru? Oh god, Jeff would be yelling at me right now. Not Majima. I know, it's not that guy. The other guy. But <laughs> this is the other character, and I think it's based in the U.S. Um, oh, wait, am I mixing my Like a Dragons up? There's so many Like a Dragons that I'm, maybe I'm mixing them up. Hold on, hold on. Ichiban. No, I might be right. Yes, okay, all right. It's just the cover had me <laughs> thrown for a loop. I was looking at the wrong gentleman. All right, so yeah, I think this is based in America. So yeah, it's in Hawaii. Um, so it kind of throws it on its head there of a different setting. Um, I enjoyed what I played of the previous title, which we played on stream for just a moment. I think it's just like a dragon, no uh, subtitle there. I enjoyed it. I didn't really enjoy the turn-based um, fighting in it. I think from a viewing standpoint, what I watched of, shout out to Jeff Reg, playing the other, is, is it the Like a Dragon series? It's got to be, right? Yakuza series. That's, Jesus, I'm all over the place. The Yakuza series there where the combat and the combos that you could flow together with the different fighting styles, that seemed more appealing to me than the turn-based. Um, but... It was goofy and comical from the little bit I did play of Like a Dragon, um, but I know these games take a lot of time <laughs> to get through, especially if you're doing everything. So Infinite Wealth, I like I said, I like the character, I like the goofiness of it, and I like the stories that they do tell in these games. I don't know if I'll ever dive into it. And that same goes for Tekken 8. Obviously much different in terms of gameplay and story that you're telling or playing or going through in Tekken 8. But fighting games, I've been thinking about this lately for me, they've kind of, I don't know, I haven't had a lot of intrigue in terms of fighting games recently. Obviously I was really into Mortal Kombat 1 when that dropped, but since completing the story of that um, and trying out the different modes, I've kind of like dropped it cold. Um, I want to try and go back into it, but it's not, it's not hooking me like they used to of like just going into... Like, I talk about Injustice 2 a lot. Like, that one hooked me with the character customization. And even though, yeah, it's a fighting game, most of your matches and the whole gameplay, yeah, it's just person character A versus character B. It's going to be a lot of rinse and repeat. But it felt more fun and rewarding in Injustice 2 um, just because of the rewards that you get with the armor sets and the extra modes towers whatever you want to call them that they had i haven't felt hooked like that in a little while in terms of my fighting game experience and i'm kind of like oh maybe the genre's falling out for me or i'm just there for the story like mortal kombat and netherrealm like they did nothing wrong i'm still there for the story um but yeah in terms of a street fighter tekken um not that it was ever huge in tekken soul caliber was more of my jam back in the day uh in terms of the 3d fighters but I don't know there's not really that drive to be like oh i want to play that one um so tekken 8 seems like it's really fluid um i haven't talked to my buddies about it yet um and what their thoughts are on it but i know this was a huge release um obviously getting the big three in a two-year span or close like just over a year span with mortal kombat street fighter and tekken is great for fighting games fans um yeah i just hope this game succeeds and you know people are enjoying it Going into February, a big one I can see right now, Persona 3 Reload. Another one I dipped my toe in with Persona. Another game that takes a lot <laughs> to play through, um, but happy for that audience. We talked in length about Suicide Squad. I'm chasing after the Platinum right now, and it is taking a long time. Um, I don't know if one of the trophies is bugged. I really hope not, uh, but the grind for the XP there is taking a while. They just announced that their first season's going to be going out with Joker at the end of the month. I'm really intrigued 
and more of a curiosity standpoint of like what they're going to bring to the table other than just a new character to try and keep the player base there it seems like the player base has kind of honestly already died off not that i've been playing online just from seeing active player counts here and there on x being posted and all that stuff um i have fun with the game it's just yeah it's getting to that point of like oh this is taking a while so we talked about it in length so i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go over it again here i enjoyed it didn't hit all the highs but uh we'll have to watch this game as it continues um with their seasonal content hell divers 2 dropped seems like arrowhead uh, studios crushed it with that i know a lot of people are playing it for me watching it it seems like fun chaos with friends i don't know if i'll jump into it just because it has that online heavy component um i feel a little bit more confident that i'd be able to play or find people to play with in my friends groups um but i don't know if that's something for me to dive <laughs> into right now um but happy for them they crushed it uh played up apparently dropped on consoles so maybe that'll be a thing down the road down the road yeah because we enjoyed our time with it on pc uh indie game here that absolutely blew up uh Bellatro, i think that's how you say it it's a poker roguelike uh, another one shout out to six one indie they've been talking about a, a lot um i'm interested to f check this one out just because i do enjoy um poker playing with family and stuff like that so in the roguelike genre so to jump into that and mix those two elements i'm interested to see what the gameplay actually is like uh it seems like the joker cards that you can collect have different abilities and different hands that you can try and aim for to win with i know poker is supposed to be technically random i don't know i'm doing a very poor job of <laughs> explaining this um but i've heard great things and it seems like the industry is talking about this game so yeah if that sounds interesting to you i would definitely give that a closer look um <laughs> february oh final fantasy 7 rebirth <laughs> eventually that's that's another one eventually we talked about it also a few weeks ago my current playthrough of final fantasy 7 the original uh i'll admit has taken a bit of a hiatus I haven't played it in about a week um need to jump back into it um but rebirth looks great that's another one that obviously i'm happy for the community for getting their hands on it finally after the remake came out two four years ago i don't know Four years ago four years ago um so yeah to see the more high def version of where i currently am and the original come out uh, it's exciting so eventually but that will probably be down the road for me all right the big one wwe 2k 24 in march coming out literally as a recording tomorrow for early access if you're watching this live, we'll be streaming it this week. If you're catching this late, go catch out the VOD or check the VODs. Maybe we'll stream it some more. But I'm really looking forward to this. There seems to be a lot of um, slight tweaks and improvements, not in terms of graphics, but in terms of the back-end stuff and gameplay stuff. It seems like they took a lot of feedback over in uh, Visual Concepts and 2K, improved some stuff, added some matches. Um, seems like they're listening to the community a little bit more. Um season pass looks great timing's a little hmm, on it in my opinion uh, but i'm really excited for this game obviously if you guys have watched the channel for a while you know obviously we're big wrestling fans here 2k is probably where i put the most hours or one of the games i put the most hours into this year uh, especially the gm mode with myself or papa griff also playing it uh, i think right now it's sitting at like 180 hours from 2k23 just really looking forward to diving into it seeing all the things they improved on and whatnot and then tearing it apart next week's podcast and the review no just kidding <laughs> but looking forward to that very very excited um to jump into there what else is coming out in march oh my god the princess peach game is coming out i didn't realize that was so soon uh the south park snow day game kind of intrigued uh seems like it's a 3d like it looks very different than stick of truth and oh crap what was the other one was it fractured but whole yes uh looks different than the art styles there obviously they 
not copied the show, but obviously took a lot of inspiration from what the show does and how the show is presented. This one looks more traditional, <laughs> traditional, looks more like what they did in the N64 games where they made it 3D. Um, I don't know too much about the game, but I might jump into it at some point. It looks fun. Uh, and Pepper Grinder, we tried this out for Next Fest. That drops for at least PC and Switch uh, come March 28th. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it, a little platformer where you kind of drill through, almost like dolphin dive, <laughs> to get to different platforms. Um, I don't know if I'll jump into it with this release. I don't know if they plan on going to other consoles. Um, I just prefer playing stuff on my PlayStation right now. So if it goes there, maybe I'll check it out at that point, but happy for them um, that it's coming out, another Devolver joint. So let's head into April. And let's see what's coming out there. Oh, Grounded coming to the PlayStation platforms. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, we had our time with Grounded. <laughs> I don't know if I'll jump back into that. Uh, but glad more people will be able to play that uh, on the platform of their choice. Uh, oh, there's a Prison Architect 2. Whoa, that's a way different art style, at least from the cover. Man, Prison Architect 1 had some chaos when we played it on Xbox on stream <laughs> with Nolan a few times. Just, uh, yeah, <laughs> build your prison, manage your, your prisoners, give them the, get the resources that your prison needs. You could go all out and be ruthless, or you could try and, you know, have a good reform program and try and get them back out to the world. And obviously people try to escape and there's brawls that happen and all that jazz. So just one of those fun, interesting, uh, management sim games. So that's all for May that stuck out to me june at least on the wikipedia side is very short here um i will shout out one i don't see in this list which i'm very excited for also played this during steam next fest but hashtag blood comes out in june i believe i believe that's june 28th actually let me look it up before i spread false information like i always do um, but i believe that one comes out in june blood june 18th okay i was 10 days off not that bad don't kill me um so that's coming out june definitely stoked for that i know the big one that people are looking forward to in that month is going to be elden rings big dlc expansion similar to it seems like similar in scale to like a horizon uh frozen hearts frozen yeah i think that's what it was seems huge seems crazy we dipped our toe into elden ring as well when it came out I don't think this one's for me, <laughs> but stoked for people who are looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, moving into July through September. There's one here which seems familiar, but I'm not really sure. Wow, Wikipedia really shit in the bed on, or there's just not a lot of confirmed dates here. Because <laughs> there's only two to three games in july august september and then october has one yikes uh hopefully we'll get some more dates obviously as the year progresses but let me look up this one game bow and the teal lotus path path of the teal lotus for some reason that name rings a bell but i can't picture the gameplay of it oh it's the little little doge kind of looking like um amaterasu i'm not sure if this is the game i'm thinking of mm, no it's de definitely got a pretty art style kind of like a 2d platformer and you know, this little fox dude taking care of enemies jumping around oh my goodness sometimes summoning things it looks like yeah this looks really great visually fantastic i think it's an indie studio as well squid shock studios published by humble games yeah that looks great um so that one's later this year in july okay we talked about this a little bit at the game awards i believe black myth wukong this one looks almost like kind of like sekiro um, apparently it's based on a Chinese novel, Journey to the West, uh, action role-playing game, uh, from, oh boy, 
Where's the... Oh, it doesn't say the studio. Thanks. Great. Um, game Science. There it is. Looks amazing visually. I know the studio has had a little bit of uh, internal issues. Let's put it that way. So that makes me the... That's the reason I'm hesitant on it. Some not great things by some of the people, how they're acting and treat people. Uh, so... We'll see. We'll see when it rolls around. But in terms of the visual standpoint and how it looks, it looks crazy. So that's August 20th. We'll have to see if we jump into that. Um, if it's the difficulty route of a Sekiro and an Elden Ring, that might just be my only hang-up. Not that those games aren't great, because they are. It's just me and my skill level. I get to a certain point, and then I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> I'm good. So I don't feel like I get far enough in these games to really warrant getting more like i have a decent amount in the backlog like the elden ring like a bloodborne sekiro lies of p most recently it's like do i keep investing in these projects and then i can't well i know i can and then i just hit these walls and of progress it's like mm, maybe not but we'll see maybe it's more it's not souls like with that difficulty we'll have to see and as for the rest of the year with september and october being a whopping four games right now that's announced Nothing there is catching my attention. Uh, I'm going to quickly scroll through the unscheduled releases. Obviously, you know, granted, might not come out this year, but see if any of the names do catch my uh, attention. Angerfoot is one we played quickly in the Next Fest demo uh, thing recently. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Beastie Ball, Volleyball, <laughs> Pokemon was also fun. I think we didn't, that wasn't this post recent most recent steam next fest i believe that was the prior one uh which i talked about it for that pa podcast cat quest 3 woo pirates and stuff i'm surprised that one's not announced but that's just a uh, one of those funny ones you can just turn off your brain kind of go with it a little bit of a hack and slash but very entertaining nonetheless um a little bit intrigued by Epic Mickey Rebrush. This was announced recently at the Nintendo Direct. But I heard great things about Epic Mickey 1 and 2 on the Wii? Yeah. So to see that it's coming to all platforms, I might give that a try uh, if and when that comes out this year. Um, mm, 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 Indiana Jones game? Mm, I don't think that's for me. Uh, Little Kitty Big City, another one we played at not this most recent Steam Next Fest, but the prior one. A little cat trying to get back to your apartment. Cute little collectathon platformer. It was a good time. Luigi's Mansion 2 HD comes out for the Switch. I believe that was a DS exclusive. <laughs> Multiverses comes back out. I'll be curious to see how that one, like, the audience return rate on that so if you don't know multiverse's story we talked i think we talked about it on the podcast because it kind of caught my attention and i really enjoyed it so it was like a smash bros with warner brothers characters um but it was also like killer instinct like where characters would rotate like four or five of them and you could only play them for the week and then it would go to the next one. But as you were playing, it, you would earn in-game currency, and you could like use that currency to permanently unlock characters type thing. Uh, and there's a battle pass system similar to every game now, but I'll keep saying Fortnite. Um, and it, it blew up. It went really well. And then they decided, we're going to take it down. Like They just shut down the servers. I think they said they were going to rework stuff because technically it was in open beta. And it's going to launch again quarter one, quarter two. Oh, well, that doesn't even make sense because maybe next quarter. But then they're going to relaunch it. So I, I I don't know. I don't know why they didn't just keep it up and rework it from there. I'll be curious to see if players flood back to it or if it's just unfortunately dead on arrival. Um, one lady and I are both looking forward to the follow-up to Gree, or at least that studio, Neva, comes out at some point. Once again, I don't know if that's this year, but at least that's on this list. Plucky Squire, you were supposed to come out in 2023. Come on, this is your year, man. <laughs> A little 2D 
3D action as your little storybook character, kind of Paper Mario in his way, attacking villains in a storybook setting, and then you can pop out 3D into the real world and still tackle enemies in the uh, child's bedroom that you're in the book. So yeah, looks cute, looks fun uh, from all possible futures and published by Devel Devolver Digital. What else do we got? Mm -mm. What do we got? Star Wars Outlaws. Still gotta finish uh <laughs> Jedi Survivor. Yikes. We'll get there eventually. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's it. Until Dawn's getting a remaster. I think I've watched that game so many times through. I don't I don't know if a remaster is for me. I also was able to download the ps4 version i think it was like when ps5 was doing like oh these are the best ps4 titles you can download them now in case like you missed them uh similar to a fallout and other games so technically i own it but it's like yeah like i said i've watched it so many times and it's one of those choice based games where it can change stuff it's like eh, i don't know but yeah those are some of the games i'm looking forward to in 2024 i'm interested in what you guys are looking forward to as well I'm sure it'll be one of those things where it seems like a light year, in at least in terms of my outlook right now. It's like, oh, not that much stuff is coming out. Maybe I can catch up on things and backlog and whatnot. But then it's going to be like, oh, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this one. <laughs> Just keep piling on. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Um, but yeah, really stoked for 2K24, like I said. Um, and then a lot of indie games. I think this is going to be more of an indie game for me this year with with Plucky Squire, if it comes out, with Neva, with, um, oh, wow. Uh, if I end up trying the Little Guardsman, Blood is definitely, definitely on my radar, excited for that, so.